stay and I can't leave. Why can't you leave? Now, come on, Ed. I'm not a beach bum. I mean, I, I just can't tear out of here on a, on a moment's notice. I... <laughs> Can I? Do you really want to know what I think? Yes, I do, Ed. Well, I had a love with my life. Just one. And I always put being the cop ahead of that. And then when I stopped being a cop, it was too late. There was too much time lost, too much... No time to grow together. I wound up losing the one thing, the one person that really counted. It sounds like you're, you're, you're telling me to go with Pam to Malakeva. Well, what's the worst thing that could happen? You'll feel guilty maybe for a couple of days, a couple of weeks, having resigned so abruptly, but when that's over, you still have your lady. But if you stay, if you let her go, my guess is you'll regret that for the rest of your life. Yeah. You know, when I was uh, younger, when I was a kid, I would have torn out of here on a moment's notice, but older. <laughs> you're trying to tell me you're going to lose the love of your life for a job. Uh, well, this, this, this job means a lot to me. Does it mean more than Pam? Because you see, my friend, that is the bottom line. You know, like she said, I'll probably get bored. No, nobody said it was an easy decision. <sighs> no, they didn't. I guess the bottom line is nobody ever laid on their deathbed and wish they'd spent more time in the office, huh? <laughs> Thank you. Okay. No. No, you picked a perfect time. Come on in. Well, can I get you guys anything? Um, no thanks. Oh, no thanks. Nothing for me. Listen, I gotta get going. I got my, my spending call for my coach. Ah. But uh, Marilyn told me you helped her get a job at the inn, and you've helped her with some pretty important decisions. Oh, uh, she gives me much too much credit. No, I don't. It's true. <laughs> well, anyway, I just wanted to personally thank you. I mean, you know, this gives me more incentives to make the Olympic team now. Well, now I know Mary Lynn's going to be joining me in Austria. Well, well wow, that, that's great. Well, I hope I can maybe have dinner with you two before you go. No, it sounds great. Listen, I got I to go, okay? Okay. I'll talk to you later. Okay, I'll okay. tell you when I get home. Bye. Bye. Take care. Yeah, you too. Bye. Well, I'm a little shocked here. I mean, Mary Lynn, I thought you were going to wait on your decision with Rick. Why should I? I love him. I want to be with him. I hope my father will eventually understand. He's not used to me asserting myself. But he has a few months. Well, you know, um, that can work two ways. Well, all I'm saying is that just because your father doesn't want you to go doesn't mean you have to just to rebel. <laughs> You don't think I should go either? No, 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 no. I didn't say that. You didn't have to. Look, Mary Lynn, ultimately, it is your decision. You have to live with it. But, Lee, your intuition and your advice mean a lot to me. Oh, and by the way, I hope you didn't go to too much trouble asking Max to get me a job here. Huh? Oh, no, no, no. He, he loved it. He, he'll love to have you working at the hotel. Well, great. <laughs> with him running this place, you never know what's going to happen. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. He's, he's pretty wild. But he's really bright. He's really imaginative, and I think he's going to turn this place around. Well, can I take you out to lunch when I get my first paycheck? Out to lunch? I would love to. I hope it's an expensive restaurant. Uh, <laughs> well, that depends on my salary. We might be eating pizza. Oh, no. <laughs> well, I really have to get home. Okay. Thank you so much. Oh, it is my pleasure. And you know what? I'm glad you're going to be working at this hotel. We can see more of each other. That'll be terrific. You bet. <laughs> Let me show you out here. Thank you so much, Lee. Sure. Goodbye. Bye. Oh, Millie.
You better rest. We're gonna need your energy if we have to escape out of here. Okay, we gotta catch up on all those years we lost. I think we should get married right away. Shh, don't, don't talk right now and talk about the future. Kate, I've been living in the future for the last five years. And in the past, too. You see, that's the fine line for survival in a place like this. You have to look back or look forward. You can never look at today. Miss Sanders, I'm so sorry to have left you here so long. Patrick London, and we can prove it by his fingerprints. Don't worry. I telephoned my superiors. They say if there is some doubt, then we certainly should have an investigation. Mr. Bentley or London, can you walk? Yeah, I can walk. The drug your mercenary friend gave me is worn off. Fine. Then we shall head out to the car and back to the capital. Wonderful. It's Trapgate. Assembled one great staff. Thank you. You take care of them. You got it. I gotta tell you, I also I just feel so relieved. Oh, Max, I hope you get everything you want out of their great adventure here. I hope I get my checks timely every month. You have my word. I know. That's why I made the deal with you. A deal that is signed, sealed, and. And Max, you okay? Are you all right? I am the owner of this hotel. Yes, you are. You, do you know what this means? Yes, I do. It means you're going to have a long and very close relationship with the IRS. The dream, my dear. We're oh, talking yeah. Max Holden dream number three. Number one, the ranch. Number two, mm -hmm. Delilah's design business. Mm -hmm. And now the cornerstone to the empire. Oh, Max, I hope you get everything. Can I speak to you alone, please? Yes, yes, of course. Excuse me, sweetie. Yes. Um, Pete, good to see you. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, oh. Wait a minute, Max. One more thing. What's that? Key to the front door? Better still. Key to the safe. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'll see you later. This is not goodbye. So, uh, that, uh, flight... The one that we're taking? Is it first class or what? We're? You didn't think I'd let you get out of here without me, did you? Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, are you mean like me? I mean, did you, did you think this through? Think it through? No. <laughs> See, if I thought about it, that would keep me here. And I went with my heart and I went with my feelings. So I typed up my resignation and... It's what I want. I, I, I hope it's what you want. What I really hope for. I just never thought you'd do it. I mean, I never thought you'd even uh, consider it. I... That's why you got to give the other guy a chance. Well, if you're willing to give it a shot, believe me, I am willing to give it a shot. Oh, Pete, I don't even tell you how happy I am for coming to Malakava. Hey, look. What's the worst thing that can happen, huh? Uh -huh. We get bored and we come back to Landview. My book, that's not bad. What do you say, kiddo? I'll go back to my place, we pack some bags, get the show. <laughs> okay, kiddo. <laughs> and goodbye to all. me one thing, all right? What? If your fears come true, then Dad, just, just don't get yourself hurt, okay? Don't do anything silly. Call the police to help Tina, you. I will be fine. I will. Just remember, you have a son to come back for. No, I can never forget that, Tina. But look, you got to promise me that you're going to take care of him and you're going to take care of yourself, too. All right? I'll be back as soon as I can. Oh, all right. This is a hug for good luck and that yeah. I... I hope you have a safe trip. Um, 
Tell Clint what I'm doing, all right? I will. I'll see you. Yeah. I just can't let you go. I just can't. I know them, Kate. They'll just take us out into the bush and shoot us. Leave us for the scavengers. Isn't that your plan? Don't be stupid. We're not going anywhere until you get the Zaroon police up here to pick us up. Enough talk. Take her. Closed, then I think we can call it a night. That is fine with me. Can I interest you in a bite to eat? Oh, are you buying? How about 50 50? Uh, I'll get him. Hello, John Russell. John, hello, oh, it's Vicki Buchanan speaking. Well, hello, Vicki. I actually I didn't expect to catch you in. Have you got a minute? Sure. I take it this isn't a social call. Uh, no, not exactly, but it's not exactly urgent either. I, I need you to track down an elusive person. Well, he must be pretty elusive if you need a private investigator. <laughs> Could we set up an appointment to discuss it? Uh, yeah, I tell you what, though. Uh, what if I put Kathy on it for you? You see, I'm a little booked up right now. Well, that's fine by me. When can we talk? Uh, hold on just a minute. It's Vicki Buchanan. She wants us to track down somebody. Uh, when can you see her? I can see her later tonight if she wants. Uh, how about in an hour or so? Wonderful, because Clint won't be home until much later tonight. Thank you very much, John. Bye-bye. Goodbye. What's wrong? Well, uh, she said that it would be okay for you to drop by tonight because Clint wouldn't be home. You don't think that the person she wants us to track down is some female who... Nah. No. John... You never told me what happened today when you met Sandra at the new club. Well, there's really nothing much to report, Cassie. John, I'm asking you as your assistant. My interest in this is strictly professional. Don't shut me out on this, okay? Yeah, I'm sorry, but I'm still just a little bit uptight over the fact that you followed Sandy's tail against my orders. Now that you've had time to think about it, aren't you glad I did? Look, John, I got the guy's license plate number for you. You must have his name by now. I am not going to be content sitting around here being your secretary. Look, you claim that I'm your assistant, but the minute there's a hint of danger, you demote me. But there's a built-in problem here. Well, I am willing to put myself on the line whether you like it or not. And that is part of the problem. I can't see myself ever ordering you into a job that would put you in direct danger. John, I was tailing a guy. It's not like I walked into the barrel of a gun. He did not notice me. I was very discreet. Okay, you did a good job. Thank you. The Montan case is strictly mine, okay? It's become a delicate operation. That's it? Look, I found the information on the guy. I deserve to know what you found out. All right. The guy that was following Andy and me is a private detective. His name is Scott Bradshaw. Now, when I cornered him and I threatened to haul him into the police, he told me who hired him. Are you ready for this? Frank Montaigne. Her husband? Yeah. He claims he's jealous and that he doesn't trust her. Then what about all the attempts on her life? Well, he says that he didn't try and run her down, that hurting her wasn't part of his instructions. But at Frankie's club later on that day, you know those glitter ball things that hang from the ceiling? One of them fell and almost smashed into the two of us. Was Frank there? No, he didn't come till later. Now, supposedly the whole thing is a freak accident. But uh, I'm not buying that. I agree. Do you think Frank had a reason for that? Maybe he has some reason for wanting his wife dead. I know them, Kate. They'll just take us out into the bush and shoot us. Leave us for the scavengers. Isn't that your plan? Don't be stupid, Bentley. You know damn well who I am. 
And we're not going anywhere until you get the Zaroon police here to pick us up. Enough talk. Take us. Try to alert the guards, I'll simply kill you. I understand. Good. Just very calm. It's all right, men. No problem. But uh, Atkins slipped badly, hit his head. He needs help. Get him to the doctor at once. I said he needs help. Get him to the doctor now. prisoner and our guest from Freedom International into the city. Yes, sir. Let's get out of here. Five years, Nelson. Five years you had me under your tortured thumb. Now, you know I don't need an excuse to pull this trigger. Right? Well, I won't give you any. I swear it. Good. Let's go. Quietly. Yeah, that's one of the possibilities. But Sandy says that she's devoted to Frank and that he's totally devoted to her. Have you run this theory by her? Yeah, I did before I knew that he hired Bradshaw. She wouldn't hear of it. Now, maybe with this new information. I hate to ask you this, John, but I'm going to have to. Maybe Sandra isn't the sweet, wonderful woman you knew in college. Maybe she gave her husband some reason to be jealous and you just don't know about it. No, no way. Very deductive reasoning, John, based strictly on your fond memories of Sandra, I might add. Oh, we're closed for the night. Uh, come in. Hi. Well, Sandra, is there a problem? Uh, no, there's no problem. Good evening, Cassie. Hello, Sandra. What is it? Uh, actually, I just stopped by to give you this check, John, because I won't be needing your services any longer. I'm firing you. Just run off with him, won't you? I won't let you do that. He's my son, Tina. You may have given birth to him, but he's mine now because I love him. He is mine and court. Gabrielle, our names are on the birth certificate, and if you make me, I will take you to court to fight for this baby. We don't have to go to court, Tina. If you would only tell the truth to everyone, then I could have my son back. I can't do that. Look. Gabrielle, look, there were all sorts of reasons why you wanted me to bring him to America. Based on lies. No, based on your life. You said that you that, that you were going to give him up because you couldn't take care of him. You couldn't feed him, feed him, and, and clothe him. And has anything changed? No. No. You said you said you didn't have any family to take him in and to love him and take care of him. And look at you. You showed up here destitute and desperate, right? I just can't trust you anymore. And I just won't let you use Al as a pawn. I'm not. I love him, Gabrielle. I do it. Look, Cord. He's putting off the divorce proceedings. Look, I know he's having second thoughts, and if you just give me just a little bit of more time, I, I promise you, I promise you that Al will have those two caring and loving parents that you always wanted for him. Oh, God. I can't run off with my baby. He's safer being with Tina. What are you thinking? I'm thinking that... I'm so confused. Oh, I know you are. Can I hold the baby now, please? No, please. 
I want to hold him. All right, let's just go inside for a little bit, all right? It's a little chilly for him here. Come on. Gabriel, he really needs to be put to bed. Please, just a few more seconds. Well, you know, why don't you come on up to his nursery? I mean, he has a beautiful nursery that he shares with his cousin Jessica. And... Gabriel, Al has a beautiful home here. Why did you call him, Al? Um, you're not going to like this. Cord's father is named Al, and he died a year ago. Well, <laughs> I see. Another heart string to be pulled. Oh, I have to hand it to you, Tina. You are clever. Gabriel, please try and listen to me. If my baby had lived, if I had been that lucky, everything would have been going on here just the same as it is now. Cord and Kate would have still been trying to get married, and Cord would need some time to think. And, and if my baby had lived, you were going to give up this wonderful little baby for adoption to complete strangers. You wouldn't even know where he was. But you do know. You know he's with me, and you know that I love him, and you know that he's going to grow up. And he's never going to feel insecure or unwanted. Tina, part of me wants to believe all of that, but I've seen the other side of you. I've seen your lies and deceits. I can't let you keep him. Gabriel, I love this baby. And you're going to find in good time that I'm going to be a very good mother to him. I am, and Court's going to be a wonderful father, too. He will be. No. Oh, come here, honey. Oh, I bet you need to be changed, huh, honey? Say goodbye to your Auntie Gabriella. And she'll be on her way. I just... I, this is so difficult for me, Tina. I know it is, but all you... Look, all you need is a good night's sleep. You're going to feel much better tomorrow. You will. No, I won't feel any better tomorrow. You still have Al. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize you had a visitor. You can't give up, Rollo. Chantel, it's hopeless. We might as well face it. Never. We simply don't have the key to the puzzle yet. I've spoken with every single member of the Medina family, and not one of them have the watch. I still think Gabrielle's lying about it. No, no, Gabrielle is such an innocent. The watch simply wasn't with her father's jewelry collection. She never gave it a second thought. Oh, and now she's disappeared. You don't find that strange, Rollo? For all you know, she's had the watch all along, figured out the numbers inside, and now has the millions Dante stashed away. You're wrong, Chantel. I stake my life on it. Meanwhile, our lives are considerably poorer because we sit here helpless. Why did Dante die on me? We were going to be married, live happily in luxury the rest of our lives. Instead, I lose a lover and the luxury. I wonder if Gabriel left a forwarding address with the post office. Perhaps. What good would it do us? Maybe I can get a postal clerk to give me the address. And we'd know where she went. And we might just find a baby. In some ways, this goes beyond just wanting money. How a baby and a watch connect to Dante's millions is a mystery I want to solve. Sit tight, Chantel. I'm going to the post office. I'll see what I can find out. Fired? What are you talking about? It's just what I said, John. I don't need your help anymore, but thank you very, very much. I'm not taking that because the job isn't done. The job is done. You found the man who was trailing me, and I don't think he's going to try it again. What about the car that practically ran you down, the glitter ball that almost fell on your head? Exactly. Um, well, I, I filled Cassie in on the details. She is my assistant. I understand, and that's fine. I just think we're all making much too much of it. Uh, the glitter ball could have been a freak accident, and as far as the car, I think I may have imagined that it was done on purpose, so I just don't want to waste anybody else's time. Well, no, I don't think that we're wasting time here, and I think you're holding back on the real reason. Maybe I better go over to Vicky's right now and discuss that case with her. Yeah, good idea, Cass. Sandra? Don't let up on her. She's covering. Yeah. 
All right, Sandra, what's going on? I don't want you to get hurt. Me? Yes. If that glitter ball had fallen on you and killed you, I couldn't live with that on my conscience, John. Well, I couldn't live with the fact that you could be killed. Damn it, this is serious stuff here. Mm -hmm. You came to me for help. That's exactly what you're going to get. No. Originally, you said you would refer me to another private investigator. I would like his name. I promise I will go to him, but I don't want you involved Sandra, anymore. Sandra, I am the only P.I. that I trust in this town with your life. And I still think that you're not telling me something. Now, I want the whole truth. Well, Medina what? at the baptism, did you? No, no, I didn't. Hello, Gabrielle. I'm Tina's sister. I'm Vicki Buchanan. It's nice to meet you. Thank you. You have a lovely home here. Well, thank you very much. Wouldn't you two like some tea or something? Uh, no, thank you, Gabrielle. I was just going to leave, and I was just going to get out to sleep. Oh, well, I just put Jessica down and Kevin and Joey, but Kevin and Joey. They are in such a silly, giggling mood that I'm going to have to go up and read them the riot act in a second, I expect. <laughs> Do you have children, Gabrielle? No. No, she doesn't. Uh, oh. In fact, her grandmother has just died, so I'm afraid Gabrielle is very much alone. Oh, I'm very sorry to hear that. Yes, I am very much alone. But I do think it helps to be with me and my baby. I just realized your father died not too long ago as well, didn't he? He was a victim of Jamie Sanders. Yes, Jamie killed him. But my father was a victim of his own greed. Gabrielle was ashamed of what her father did, but she loved him a great deal, and I'm sure she misses him, too. Well, I can certainly understand the conflict between loving a parent and not approving of his activities. If I can give you a word of advice, hold on as firmly as you can to the loving memories, and as for the other ones, the bad ones, chalk them up to human frailty and let them go. I'd like to do that. It just seems as though so many things have gone wrong in the past year that even the good memories have turned sour. Well, life comes in cycles, Gabrielle. You are obviously in a very difficult one. Oh, it can't get much worse than it is now. I have committed a sin, and I... I feel so very guilty about it. It, it concerns the baby. Tina and her baby are very important to me. John, I swear to you, there is nothing more to this. I just want you to stay well and healthy. Sandra, don't I look well and healthy despite several years in this business? Now I have the experience to protect both of our lives. What's more, I've got a personal stake in this, you know. I want to get the guy that tried to nail you and me. So I can't dissuade you? No, you can. So just forget it and sit down. Now tell me, what went on this afternoon after I left? Uh, nothing. I just had a lot of mind games going on. So you don't think the glitter ball incident was an accident? Yes, I do think it was an accident because I don't know how anybody could get into my husband's club to get to me. <sighs> Sandy, there's some information that I have that we need to discuss. And it means discussing Frank. Wait a minute. No, I, we've discussed Frank and I've already told you, Jeff. Yeah, I know I what you've told involved. me. I know what you've told me. But once you hear this information, you're not going to be able to simply dismiss Frank as your devoted husband. My God, a real room and comfortable furniture. I bet there's even hot cold water in the bathroom. <laughs> hot showers is something you haven't had for a while, eh, Patrick? <laughs> About five years. And a comfortable bed with a great mattress. I wonder what we can do with that. All those little things I used to take for granted. <clears throat> we must make arrangements for the two of you to get back to America. Oh, we're safe, aren't we? They're not going to try to arrest Patrick again. We must watch very carefully. I know the authorities are interrogating Nelson, but I'm not sure he knows who ordered your arrest in the first place. He's just a system lackey. Yeah, but somebody must have given him the order to take us out and shoot us. Let the police worry about that. You two relax and get some rest. Any chance we could leave here tonight? I'll see. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Gaston? Yes. Thanks for everything. Glad the mission was successful. Thanks, Gaston. Alone at last. Oh. 
You know, you really should lie down and rest. You haven't been too steady on your feet. Hmm. Called me faltering, huh? Okay, I'll sit down. I keep having to remind myself this isn't a dream. No, it's not. But the horror's almost over. You know, it's just starting to dawn on me that we almost got killed out there. I live with that horror every day for the past five years. I thought that each day might be my last. The only way I was ever able to get through it, baby, is to just keep going and toughen up. It was that simple. I can't stand the thought of you suffering when none of us even believed that you were alive. You had no choice but to think that. But somehow you must have known. Especially since you acted so quickly after finding the photograph. I really hope the uh, operator calls uh, with the phone call from the States, because I'd really like to tell everybody that we're okay. Tell me more about my sister. Oh, God, I lost touch with Cindy until I... Until, um, until I tracked her down, and then uh, she moved from uh, New York to Landview on business. Oh, that's great. My sister and I are going to be living in the same place. And what about your family? Is your grandma still alive? Are you kidding? Grams is healthier than any of us. Mm. My mother and father are fine, too. They're divorced, but I really think that's for the best. That doesn't surprise me. What about that uh, rascally brother of yours? Did he ever get his act together and go to work for the company like Charles wanted? Jamie's in Statesville, and he'll be there for the rest of his life. Why? Because he owned and operated a crack factory. What's a crack factory? Oh, that's right. There's all the stuff that you don't know. Crack is a kind of cocaine, only it's um, less expensive and more addictive. You mean with all the Sanders' wealth, he had to deal drugs for money? And the thrill. <sighs> he killed a man, Patrick. He's caused my family a lot of heartache. <sighs> Twist of life. Yeah. I don't think there'll ever be a twist as miraculous as me finding you alive. You want something to eat? I'm sure uh, the hotel could send up a great meal for you. I haven't been eating much lately. As a result, my appetite's almost nil. Maybe on the way home. Tell me something. Is airplane food still as marvelous as I remember? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, baby, the miracle isn't I'm alive. The miracle is that we're together. Well, I've had a lot of practice with my cousin's children. Oh, you lived in Great Britain, did you? I studied there for many years. Ballet originally, but then an accident changed my life. Bad luck goes way back with me, I'm afraid. But now? Well, now I've started designing dresses. I hope to do some more. Oh, we have a very good friend, Delilah Garrison. She might be very oh. interested in your work. Um. Uh, yeah, well, I, Gabrielle really isn't in staying in the country. Actually, Tina, I might just do that. Oh, I, I didn't realize. Well, the more I think about it, the less reasons I can find to return to Buenos Aires. Well, especially now, it must be very depressing for you back there. So why not give this country a chance? Yes, lots of opportunities, as millions of others have found out in the past. Would you like me to put in a, a word with Delilah for you? Well, actually, I already know Delilah, and she knows of my designs. And I believe that I'll be able to work for her if I want to. But that's wonderful, isn't it? Yeah, well, are you sure that's what you want to do, Gabrielle? I mean, get caught up in a job and everything before you're even sure you want to stay here? Oh, I'll be staying for a while, Tina. And if I want to eat and pay my rent. I'll have to get a job. Yeah, I guess you will. Well, I really think it's time I got out to bed. Yes, I must be going. Thank you for your hospitality, Vicky. Mm -hmm. Listen, feel free to drop by any time you want to. And if you uh, feel like a family dinner, we always have plenty of room at the table. You're very kind. Thank you again, and good night. Good night. No doubt I'll be speaking to you tomorrow. Yes. No 
doubt. So tell me about all the exciting research projects you've been working on. Well, I uh, actually haven't worked very much this year. That doesn't sound like you. Uh, well, I, I just, you know, I, I need to take a break, I guess. Um, plus, with all the problems that Jamie was causing my family, I didn't really feel like I could leave Landview. Well, I'm glad you didn't. Otherwise, that photograph of me would never have been seen. I guess it must be fate, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I guess it was. And there must have been some men in your life. Patrick, I don't want to talk about that just now. Kate, I'm a realist. You know that. I never expected you to sit home for all those years. But I always knew you'd never give your heart away. You were a tough act for any man to follow. <laughs> I always thought we were destined to be together. Our work and our engagement were interrupted, but now that's over. You make it seem more like five minutes than five years. I'm just trying to put it behind me. But I want you to know that I have changed. I've become harder and colder and more callous. I had to, Kate, out of necessity. I don't feel that. Well, it's there. I'm not naive or innocent or even all that optimistic anymore about living. Yeah, that's not the way you've been talking. Well, right now I have good reason to be optimistic. But, I don't know, I don't even know how to say it. I'm just older and wiser than I've ever wanted to be. Patrick, we've got to find out who was behind getting you arrested. Kate, I've been over that so many times in my mind. My brain feels like a tape recorder. I mean, I'm a doctor, for God's sake. I was working on a project that would help humanity. It wasn't political. You really don't think it was a case of mistaken identity, huh? I know that when I was knocked unconscious, I had my own ID in my pocket. When I woke up in prison, I had Miles Bentley's ID in my pocket. That can be no mistake. Just, I, I don't want to talk about that right now. Just, maybe I should have something to eat. Great. I'll uh, call and order us some dinner, okay? Good. And I'll take a much-needed shower. <laughs> Another reason why I think I need another private investigator. Now, I resent that. You're questioning my professional objectivity. Yes, I am, where Frank is concerned, because I think you still resent the fact that I chose him over you. This has nothing to do with the fact. I think it has a lot to do it with the fact. It has to do with the fact that I talked with Scott Bradshaw. Yeah. When I threatened to haul him into the police, he told me that he was hired to follow you by your husband. Could he be lying? No, I don't think so. Anyway, he told me enough that I don't think he could have made it up. Why? Did you ask him why? Yeah. And he says that Frank is jealous and he thinks that uh, you've been fooling around. Oh, no. No, that's ridiculous. I have never given Frank a reason to be jealous. John, we live together, we work together, we have a 24-hour-a-day marriage. When on earth would I even have time? I mean, this is preposterous. What about Frank's temper, though? Maybe, maybe you got into a conversation for a little bit too long with someone down the No! Club, right? Frank is not like that. And in our business, you have to be friendly. Come on, Sandra, you shoot down everything that I'm saying. Nonetheless, he did hire Bradshaw, and someone has tried to kill you. My twice. husband is not a killer, and there is no way that he wants me dead. She'll want to settle in America. Oh, no, who's that? That is for me, by prearrangement. It's Cassie Callison. Oh, okay, well, you know what? Vicki, I'm going to let you talk to her, and I'm going to go on right up to bed. Okay, I will talk to her, and you do look tired. Yeah, I am. <laughs> hi, Vicki, hi, hi, Tina. Uh, hi, Cassie. I don't mean to be rude or anything, but I'm going to let you two talk and go right on up to bed. Okay, how's little Al? Oh, Al is great, thanks. Oh, good. Bye. Good night. Good night, Al. So here you are, Cassie Callison, your own personal private detective. Well, I'm trying to be, but with John, I take one step forward and then seven steps back. Uh, so I am hoping this is a very impressive case so I can show off my talents. Well, I'm not sure how impressive it is, but do you remember an actress from years ago named Natasha Norman? Sure, I'm an old movie buff. Oh. What about her? She's here in Landview, and I would like to interview her, but I can't find her. 
Well, she's a recluse. Even if you did find her, I doubt she'd grant you an interview. Yes, but at least I could talk to her and try and persuade her into it. So, your assignment, should you decide to accept it, would be to find out where she lives and uh, where she goes uh, so that I can meet her. Vicki, would you be real disappointed if I turned this case down? Ah, not exciting enough for you, huh? No, no, it's just that John has so many cases at the office, and there's one case in particular that I'm rather involved in, and your case could kind of take days. Uh-huh. Come in, Gilbert. Oh, do you have x-ray vision? No. <laughs> it's his special <laughs> knock. Good evening, Gilbert. How are you? Good evening, Victoria. Just a quick question for you. Okay, hold on. Do you know Cassie Callison? Cassie, this is our incredibly talented gardener, Gilbert Lang. No, I haven't had the pleasure. Hello there. Hi, nice to meet you. Would you excuse me just a second? Mm -hmm. So you are not willing to find the reclusive Miss Natasha Norman for me, and I do understand your reasons. You're sure? Absolutely. Listen, I only called your office on an impulse. I totally struck out with her agent, and I thought maybe a good private eye, but never mind. Well, if you want to check with me in a couple days, maybe the pressing case will have been handled, and then I can help you out. Maybe I'll figure out an ingenious way to solve it myself. Thank you by very much for coming by. Okay. It was nice meeting you, Mr. Lang. Uh, take care of yourself, young lady. I'll let myself out. Please tell Clint and the boys I said hi. I will do that. All right. Bye, Anne. Bye. Good private eye, huh? Dumb idea. Not bad, but I have a better one. How about a gardener that knows Natasha Norman personally? Gilbert, you? Watch the house, Barney. I'm going shopping. Bet she's going for jerky treats to treat the world's best guard dog. Ever vigilant, ever fur... Uh. Feel better? Yeah. Agile, mobile, and hostile. Oh, no. <laughs> Dinner's here. <clears throat> Suddenly, I'm not very hungry. For Mom, anything except you. Gotta eat. Gotta put some weight on. Look who's talking. You don't approve? What do you think? You're more beautiful than you ever were. I'm sorry, Patrick. It's just... Uh, everything is happening so fast. I'm not even used to the fact that you're still alive. I can understand that, Kate. We should be talking about uh, going back to Landview and your work and reconstructing your notes hey, and... Hey, hey, hey. I don't want to think about that right now. Can't you see that I need you? Don't you know that I've been replaying all the nights we made love over and over and over for the past five years? Start over with me, Kate. Relive those nights with me. Make love to me now. you put her to bed this early? Well, perhaps she got bored of her babysitter, so I took her upstairs, put her into her pajamas, and she went to sleep. Oh, I really can't thank you enough. I, I had to get things in control down at the factory. Uh, can I get you a drink or something? Yes, I'd, I'd like that. Um, Gabrielle, could you tell me what made you change your mind about coming to work for me? I need to stay in the States a while. Getting to work would be the best thing for my brain right now. It never seems to shut off. Yeah, I know how that is. Gabrielle, you are so talented, and I need I need you so much. I, I could pay you. Well, I could pay you whatever I could, besides all the money that I owe you already. Well, we'll work something out. I guess you left Buenos Aires before you got my letter. I detailed a full payment schedule. I must have. I never received it. Success, I see. Yes, I was the concerned friend of the family, and the postal clerk gave me all of Gabriel's mail, which, of course, I promised to deliver in person. And look what I found. A letter from Delilah Garrison in Landview, Pennsylvania. Remember the story I told you about Gabriel recognizing some of her own creations in a fashion magazine? Yes, and you thought the woman stole them. Mm -hmm. Obviously true, she wants to pay for them. Rollo, isn't Landview where Max Holden also lives? Right. Undoubtedly, that's where Gabrielle has gone. I should get on a plane tomorrow. No. She'd never think it just a coincidence that you happened into that town. We have to come up with a plan. Chantal, 
Gabriel has never met you. You visit us, Sanders. Maria Roberts? Pardon me. Well, this is what they call a surprise. Well, won't you sit down? Sure, why not? He's talking to the other cons, anyway. So, Maria, tell me, how's that son of yours, Cord? Still charging around on his white horse? Oh, well, I didn't come here to discuss Cordero. Jamie, I need to ask you a few questions. Yeah, well, it'll be up to me, of course, whether I decide to answer them or not. Well, there isn't any reason why you wouldn't. It's... I'm merely interested in the relationship between Gabriel Medina and Tina Roberts in Argentina. This straight, Maria. You came all the way down here to ask me questions about Tina Roberts and Gabriel Medina? I have reason to believe that, that Tina came back from Argentina with a secret. A secret somehow tied to Gabriel. <sighs> and you think I know what this secret is? Well, if you don't, I'm hoping that you're going to help me figure it out. You knew Gabrielle's father in, in Buenos Aires. Well, I'm assuming that you know her pretty well, too. No. We only met a few times. She was a pretty cold fish. Well, she's very emotional around Tina and the baby. And I think that's somehow connected. Jamie, please, will you help me? Why? Why, Maria? Why should I... Oh. I'm sorry I couldn't meet you earlier, but I had a client whose son was arrested and I got stuck at police headquarters. Well, thank you for coming. Could you please tell me what the hell is going on with Kate? I can't get a straight answer out of Cindy. <laughs> Charles keeps telling me not to worry. I, the only way I'm going to find out for sure is if I go to Geneva myself. No, Kate's coming home. Are you sure? Yes, I talked to Charles. He got a cable. She's coming home tomorrow. Well, is she all right? Yes, she's very good. I mean, Charles said she was fine. Oh, thank God for that. <laughs> yes. Uh, did she help out this friend of hers? Yes, she did. Are you sure she's all right? Yes, you should get a good night's sleep and unpack your bags and you can see her in the morning. Oh, that is wonderful. I'm so that, relieved I can't that's tell you. I've heard. <laughs> Listen, I, I'm still real confused, though. Well, what's going on? Why did Kate leave her hotel room in Geneva? What happened? I've dreamed this moment for five years, Kate. To be alone with you. To hold you. Now that dream's finally come true. Patrick? Shh. No more talk. I want to make love to you. We have to talk. There's something that I have to tell you. Why do you think Gabrielle suddenly showed up on the day that Cordentina's baby was to be baptized? I don't know. You'll have to ask her. Well, I did. She told me that she and Tina got to be friendly when you were holding them captive in the jungle. But, if they're such good friends, why didn't Tina tell Gabrielle that she was divorcing Cord? And when I told Gabrielle, why do you suppose she was so upset? Interesting questions. And, ever since Tina came back to Landview, she's been acting very strange. Well, she did almost get killed. Maybe it just knocked some sense into her. No, that's not it. There is something going on with that baby. Jeez, you are really wired about this, aren't you? Well, of course I am. I have to protect my son and my grandson. Yes, your son. Your son, Cord. Well, as far as I'm concerned, Cord has got a few screws loose. First he gets involved with that trashy redhead, and then he does a 180-degree turn and falls for my sister, Little Miss Perfect. Can you believe they didn't even send me an invitation to their wedding? I read about it in